Welcome to SciGraphic Show. How did the Earth look like 200 million years ago? Well, after a lot of tectonic changes to the continent are applied over 4 billion years, a massive land mass formed about 300 million years ago. It was then just one supercontinent called Pangaea, and there was just one giant ocean called Pantalassa. The supercontinent Pangaea began to break apart about 200 million years ago. Gondwana first split from Laurasia. If you can imagine Africa, South America, Antarctica, India, and Australia all together in the same landmass, yes, it's our huge Gondwana which was split from Laurasia. If you are wondering what Laurasia is, it's present day Eurasia and North America connected together. Then, about 150 million years ago, Gondwana broke up and India was pushed up separate according to a 1970 article in the Journal of Geophysical Research. These facts are based on plate tectonic theory proposed by Alfred Wenner. The plates of the Earth are shown here in the picture. Take a closer look at the direction of its movement. This plate constantly moved to make changes to the continents we see today. Imagine if the earth cools completely. The plates on the surface will no longer move and there will be no earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. It will take more than 90 billion years. But before it happens, sun will reach earth's orbit to melt the earth in another 5 to 7 billion years into sea of magma. Well, let's see what's inside the earth. Way deeper it is so hot that the rocks are melted. It is called magma. The hottest magma breakouts through the earth crust through some vents called volcanoes. The magma that comes out of the volcanic eruption is called lava. The molten rocks or the magma gets risen up through the crater pipe packets. As a lot of heat rises up, the gases expand to convert the water to steam, thus creating huge amount of pressure. When it is so high that the volcanic vents can't contain the pressure, the volcanic breakouts through the crater and side vents. Where the plates collide, the seafloor rocks containing carbon gets pushed deep into the earth. The layer of rocks gets melted and release carbon dioxide and gases, and this gets released into the atmosphere by a volcanic eruption. This region around the edges of the Pacific Ocean has hundreds of most active volcanoes stretching to 40,000 kilometers and is known as the Ring of Fire. Here's where the 90% of the world's earthquake and tsunami strike. The problem with the Ring of Fire is that the geologists cannot predict accurately when there will be a seismic activity or when a volcano is going to erupt. It is even harder to predict earthquake and there can't be any clue to the people when their ground is going to shake. 